Welcome to Folderit, the most user-friendly document management system in the world. And as you can see, everything is very clean and simple. But don't be fooled by this simplicity. Folderit is plenty powerful. On the left side, you have the main sections. They are the highest level folders in Folderit. And they are pre-made. All of them are empty, but you are free to remove the ones you don't need, rename the ones that you want to re rename, and you can also, of course, create new sections. So, they are the highest level folders. Two of the first ones are a little bit special, and I will cover that a bit later. Right. So, under each of those highest level folders, main sections, you can, of course, create your own folder structure. You can create folders and folders inside folders, obviously. There we go. If you want to add files, you have several options. One is that you, well, click on the upload button, choose a file and upload it. The other option is to open your file browser and just, you know, drag and drop files in. There they go. Okay. Now you can see that the first file has already this little magnifying glass icon on it. It means that the preview file is generated. So I don't have to download the file to see its content. I can click on the icon and actually see this preview. You can also print from it, you can download the document from it, you can select, you know, copy text from it if you're allowed to. Right, so this is one way of importing files. You can also upload folders. So if you click here, you can upload the folder. You can create new Office files within Folderit and edit them later if you have Office 365 subscription. If you import a zip file, then the system asks you if you want to unzip it in Folderit. Let's just upload it for a moment. I go back to the list view. And from settings, I can uncompress this. So let's uncompress the AJAR archive. There, finished compressing. And here it is. Right. So this way, you can import large folder and file structures. And if you actually meant to upload it to another place, like under human resources here, then just select it and drag it to the right location. Now, if I click on Human Resources, here it is. Right. So this is file importing. And now we're in the list view. You have a list of files here. And by default, it displays name, tags and date columns. But you can actually customize it. For that, there's a button on the toolbar called Columns. If I click on it, I can rearrange and I can add new ones. Like, let's start displaying document ID as well. Let's uh, also display file size. And if you create any custom metadata fields, then you can also display those here. So let's save it. And there you have it. Document ID and size is nicely displayed. If I click on the file, I'm now in the detail view. You can see more details about the file. For example, you have the audit log, which records every action someone does with this file. Like my account, folderate.folderate.com, has added this file because we uploaded it. We have also previewed the file. So it timestamps and records every action. If someone downloads a file, let's download it. And now I refresh the view. You can see that the file has been downloaded at that time by this user. There are some empty metadata fields here, which you can fill in. For that, click on Modify button. There you are. Now you can fill in this information here. 
every time I type comma, this new tag appears. And in the notes field, I can also add links. So let's save it. So you can see that we have now filled in this metadata. And you can see that the link actually is clickable. So if you want to refer to any outside materials, this is one way to do it. Let's go back to the metadata modify view. And you can see there are custom metadata fields. So if you need your own metadata fields to, to be displayed, just click on the plus and create it. Okay, let's save it. And there it is. And all this metadata is fully searchable along with the content of the file. Okay. Now, if you want to connect this file with another file, for example, if there's a file under human resources, HR archive, under freelancers, you know, perhaps uh, full-time employees, okay, we have this contract one, and I want to connect it with the file we were working on earlier, then I click on it, I copy this document ID, then I go back to accounting 2020, the PDF document that we worked on, I go to modify, and here I paste this unique ID. Then I click add file, and you can see that the contract one now appears here. Let's save it. There it is, related files. So this PDF document is related to another file. So when I click on it, it takes me to this file instead. Right. If you need to add new version of a file, then click on Upload New Version. So if you click it, you can then upload the file through this interface. Let's choose a file like Contract 2, for example. And there it is. Now we have these other versions module here. Right? At any time, I can download each previous version or delete it or restore it as the actual version. So if I click on restore, instead the contract 2 that we just uploaded as a new version was put to archive. If you download the file and start working on it and don't want anyone else to work on the file at the same time, you can lock the file, you can check it out. So click on lock file. And as you can see, other editors will not be able to change the metadata or add new versions until the file is unlocked. The file unlocks automatically after six hours if you don't unlock it first. Okay, let's lock it. And now the other editors will see a prominent banner here that says that, well, another user is currently working on the file and it uh, unlocks automatically after X amount of time. Okay, let's unlock it. There's also approval workflow. So if you need this document approved, then you click on start approval workflow. You can write in resolution. Is this okay? For example, and choose between two types of approval, in parallel and serial. In parallel mode, everyone that you invite to approve this document, well, they all receive the invitation at the same time. And it doesn't matter who approves or rejects first. In serial mode, the certain order is, is very, very important. Like, if I put myself in here, then the system will send the invitation to approve first to me. And only after I have decided something, will the system send the approval request to another user. Okay, right, so you can see this indicates that I have already received the email um, invitation to approve and John is waiting his because I haven't approved the document yet. And each of those other versions can be separately approved. So if a document gets uh, rejected, then you can 
upload a new version and start approval workflow for that document again. So this is a file level approval workflow, but you, if you actually need this to be more automatic, then you can do this. Let's create a, a folder here called invoices. Right. So let's say you want to approve a bunch of invoices. So let me upload some invoices here. Okay, and there's a nice list of, of invoices now. Then I just go here, click on settings and approval. Right. So this way I can set up automation. If I make it active, add my resolution. Are they okay for payment? And again, choose the type serial or parallel type. Let's only add ourselves here for the moment. You can, of course, add many people. You can choose if this is applied to subfolders as well, this automation, and then you can create it. Okay, the automation is now started in the background, and you now see this folder icon which has a stamp on it. And also it's highlighted in blue, which means that if we go there, you can see that all those files have now been sent for automated approval workflow. If I click on any of those, I can always click on view approval workflow and can see, uh, okay, this is sent to approval. Now, if anyone uploads any file to this folder, it is sent for automated approval as well. Okay, let's go to invoices. And you can see all of those files are now sent. Now the people who need to approve, they will receive email notification about it, but they can also see them in system. So if they click here and on the file, then this is this is how the approval view looks. I can preview the file prior to approving it. I can download it. I can give my comment. I think it's it's okay and I can approve it. Right. And now you can see that this file has been approved. If I, if I click on it, you can also see it in audit log what has happened to this file exactly. So this is automated approval workflows. Let's now, now locate our PDF document again and let's see what else can you do here. So we had metadata, we had custom metadata fields, we had the way to link files in system, we had versioning, audit log of course, mm, file checkout, lock, locking the file, approval workflow, but also you can set up reminders. So if you click on remind, well, you obviously can set up a, re a reminder here. This is the time. <laughs> okay, so let's remind. And now you can see in the reminders list that we have one reminder for, for this file. If I click on it, I can edit it, but I can also add new reminder. So let's put one from, from a week from now and send it to John. Take action. Okay, and remind. Okay, so now we do have two reminders here. Also, you can of course download the file, you can delete the file, and you obviously can share the file. But let me show you sharing from here. You can share any resource in Folderit. You can give access to a certain file, you can give access to folder and its content. You can add, give access to the, one of the main sections or your whole account, everything that you have. And the logic is the same on each level. So if I want to share this PDF document, then I click on the sharing icon here. And now I have some choices. If I want to share this file to a concrete person, then I can put in their username. 
I can choose between three access levels. The preview. Preview only means that the user is not able to download the document and they can only see it in system, in the preview window. So they are unable to use the, the print button on in folder it, they can't download the file and they can't also select text from the, from the document. Viewer can print the file, can download the file, but can't make any changes to the file or the metadata. And editor can do everything with the file. With uh, Office integration, they can also make changes to the document. They can for sure upload new versions of the document and, and do things like that. You can also activate expiration. So John can access the file as editor, but only until tomorrow. Now, if I click on share, you can see that John has now access to the file. You can add more people from here as well with different permissions like viewer with no expiration and you can share to a whole group of users like if you have defined some groups accountants partners you know whatever it is then you can share to a whole group at once you can also activate the public link so if you activate it this link appears and now if you copy it then everyone who knows this link can access the resource. So like if you have some annual reports or something that you want to make public uh, on your website, then you can upload them to folder it and, and actually use this for, for publishing and storage. And you can also set the expiration for public link as well. Now, if I exit this model, you can see in the list view that this resource has highlighted um, uh, sharing icon which means that the resource is shared out if you want to share a folder like this september folder or perhaps the 2020 folder then you just click on the sharing icon here and again the logic is the same now if i give john editor permission for this whole folder then john can actually access all of it its content and make changes to it. Editors can also add files and remove files. If some, someone deletes something, it will be sent to recycle bin though. Okay, so now we have two resources shared. If I want to share one of the main sections like human resources, then I click here, share from here, and I can activate it. There's another automation that you can set, and this is retention automation so if you have some some files that you need to retain for a certain amount of time but no more then you go here select the folder and click on retention now if you activate it you can choose how for how long the documents in this folder and optionally it's subfolders is retained until it's either sent to recycle bin or deleted permanently. So this is actually counting the age of the document from the moment it was uploaded. Okay, so now we have this automation. If I want to, I, I'll click on it. I applied it uh, to subfolders as well, right? And now I can go to columns and choose retention end to see for how long this document is actually kept. Let's choose retention end to here as well. Okay, so this is it. Now, if you want to exempt some of the files from this, uh, this automation, then you click on it. You see retention here. It's moved to recycle bin in 2027. If you click on it, you can make it inactive or activate some very specific time for, for that one. Okay. 
So if I go back to the list view, you can see that the retention end is infinite in this files case and it's a little bit less than seven years for others. A few minutes less, actually. Now, let's see what the admin tools are. They are visible only for the ad administrators of the account. And you can freely choose who are your administrators. Obviously, the very first account that your company has is one of the managers, administrators. So one of the tools is user management, right? So you can add users from here. If you need to add collaborators, then you go to manage users, click on add user, and then you can add their email address, their name and position in company. So let's create the user. And there it is in my team now. Now John receives an email invitation to join the team. And from there, John can choose their own password, his own password. If John has selected a password, logged in, then this team section is the only resource that your users can see by default. Everything else needs to be shared to them specifically. But the team folder is shared with all your team users. So John has automatic access to the team folder. If you have some password policies of your company, then you can enable custom password policy and set the minimum length of the password and how many special characters it needs to include and how often uh, the password needs to be um, replaced with, with another one and so on. So this password policy tool is available for, for you to manage your team's password policies. Now, if your team member leaves the company, then you go to manage users again, click here and click on remove all access. Right. So this will remove all access from from John. The second thing here is manage user groups. So you can create user groups, obviously. Like accountants, for example. Okay, so now we have one group, accountants. There are no users yet, but if I click on add member and add John here, then John is the first member. Obviously, you can add many, many people to your user groups. And then when you want to share, like this accounting here, then you can choose to share to accountants group as well. So give them editor permissions and share. Let's do that. Okay. Recycle bin. This is only visible for administrators. So if someone deletes something, it will first be sent to recycle bin. And then the administrator has the ability to restore it or delete it from the recycle bin. And recycle bin retains the data for 30 days. If I click on more tools, there's a sharing here. And why is this sharing here? It's because it's account sharing. This is the highest level sharing. I can share my whole account with someone. Well, obviously, I want to do that to share to, to the company managers, to, to the owners. You know, this is the highest level. And now if I give someone like the whole accountants group for, for some reason, I give them editor access, then everyone in this group will become administrator. So giving editor permissions on account level gives administrator powers. Next thing is access overview. So you can see which people are accessing or have any kind of access to your folder system. Also, which public links have been activated. We did this for the PDF document, I can turn it off from here as well. And if you click on any of the people here, you can see what they can access. And because we haven't shared anything to John yet, we can see that 
he only has access to the theme section. Shane has access to the PDF document and Sean here has access to those kind of resources. Metadata, this is the place that displays all your custom metadata fields so you can manage them, edit and delete them. So if you have many many folders and and custom metadata fields here and there, then you might uh, lose track where something is, is exactly used. So this lists them all. And then there's audit log, which logs every action of every user. So you can refine the search by date range from specific users in your system. Let's see what like, John has done yesterday. And you can also choose the concrete action like like all files deleted it is it displays this but we haven't deleted any files so no results there but yeah all the all the previous downloads deletions files added are tracked and logged here there's also a powerful search function here of course so if you want to search for something, you just start typing. Like in this case, I was typing in and it already gives me suggestions like invoices or inbox. So if I press enter, then I can see more search results and, and more refinement tools for that. You can search from everything from file name only from folder name from metadata only from file content only and from notes if i click on advanced search then i can also search from within date range file extensions tags signers or use my own metadata in combination with other search terms Let me choose another account and type in invoice again. So you can see that if I filter to content search only, click search, then it gives me results that are actually not based on metadata or file names. Like this case, I click on it. You can see that nowhere there is, is written anything like invoice. But if I click here, I can see that invoice is actually in the file content so this is how the content search works and it also works for like png like image files so if i click it this is not the text file this is a screenshot but since invoice is written here the system will understand it what i did here is that i switched accounts thing is folder it actually supports multiple business sub accounts so if you are a group of businesses then you can create an account for each of your branch companies separately so each of those have actually different main sections different content and different teams okay so folder support, manage users, no users here. But if I go to Mandalay Industries, manage users, you can see there are three users here. So the teams are different, but this is all managed by, by one account owner who has access to everything. So this is, this is optional to use those sub accounts. In the accounts view, you can also see the inbox address of each and this is the inbox that you can see here, right? You can add files to this folder by sending an email with an attachment to the address, which is generated based on your company name. And if someone sends an attachment to this email address, then this is received by your inbox. Like if I click on folder it white paper here, I can see who sent it, what was the email subject, and what was the content. 
so the inbox is quite capable of receiving files and then you can drag and drop and change the location you can click here and modify and change the location from here as well so many possibilities and each of your sub account has a different email address for importing if you want to, want to download everything you have all the files the folders you just click here it will ask you your password to be sure and it will download a nicely structured zip file of all your content under your profile you can change your language and every user can do it independently so if some of your users actually prefer another language then you can let them choose something else also the time zone the default account so if you have multiple accounts this means that the one it takes you to when you log in plans management this is where you can choose the plans you can upgrade notifications well if you need to be notified by some events in the system via email notification then this is where you can set it up like if someone adds a new file and you want to immediately know about it then you click on send instantly to receive instant notification or maybe you never want to hear about it because well audit logs record every action anyway so maybe let's set it to not send if someone updates a file I don't want to hear about it if someone deletes a file maybe I do want to hear about it instantly but there's a third option which is sent grouped and this means grouped email notification and you can choose how often this group is sent like like every week every Monday at nine o'clock I want to know what has happened within a week about those events right so you can also opt for the group notifications of course approval workflow notifications like response to approval request or something they are by default sent instantly and you can choose another email address for your notifications so it doesn't need to be your main business email even and then there's api so if you need some kind of integrations to be to be done and you have some developers or, or company who can take care of that or turn to us then uh, then api will allow to connect folder it with other software okay so i think this is um, this is it i hope you you enjoyed this over overview and uh, if you have any questions then we are very happy if you contact us so take care stay safe bye bye